Life update. Look at this, data fans. Look, I got Google certified. Woohoo! I'm a professional cloud architect now, and I managed to deploy my first Dockerized Stream It app to GCP. I'll, I'll show you at the end of the video if you want. But if I'm being honest, I didn't really see the value in getting certifications. For me, it was only a badge to stamp on LinkedIn or in response to call for tenders that show you crammed a lot of Google documentation in two days before passing the exam. But after four months of preparation, reviewing sample questions like, you need to implement virtual private cloud service controls for Mount Kirk Games. Mount Kirk Games wants to allow cloud shell usage by its developers. Developers should not have full access to managed services. What should you do? And practice the creation of virtual machines behind load balancers through the Google Skills Boost program, I actually learned about a lot of GCP services. Like, apparently there's a service for anything. Prevent data from leaving your organization, VPC service controls. Email authentication as a service, identity platform. Package video files for optimized web delivery. YouTube, uh, no wait, Transcorder API. It's all there in the left sidebar of the huge GCP console, which after four months of preparation, finally does not scare me anymore. There's also this super helpful GCP cheat sheet with a list of explanation for all the services. Yet something about GCP and cloud stresses me out as a noob cloud user when I compare it to using Streamit Cloud, storing my Streamit Docker image on Artifact Registry, 25 cents per month, building Docker images with cloud builds, the first 2,500 builds per minute per month are free, but after that? Also, if I misconfigured cloud build and artifact registry in different regions, there is a cost for moving the Docker image through regions. Apparently, cloud build creates a hidden storage bucket uh, with logs and metadata, so if you build multiple images per day, does that become a very big bucket which costs a lot of money? You, you can delete that bucket since the build logs are stored in your GCP project logs anyway. Now okay, how am I supposed to know that? Every click of a button on the cockpit is like Do you want to play a game? Maybe I should rename my buy me a coffee donation button to help me pay my Google bill donation. There is a dedicated role to optimizing your cloud expenses. And it's not the professional cloud architect, no, it's the thin FinOps engineer. <laughs> There's even a FinOps hub in your GCP project that, that shows you how much high demand this is. And I heard way too many cloud horror stories to not consider asking for FinOps help. A friend of mine and senior data engineer told me his intern created a cloud function that runs every time a new file appears in a storage bucket. The thing is that cloud function dumps a new log file at every run into that same storage bucket. You can imagine what happened next. Uh, anyway, data fans who want to showcase your work to the world and get the recognition you deserve, where does that lead us? I, I admit, when it comes to deploying Python web apps, I've always overlooked cloud providers. Shumit Cloud and Hugging Face Spaces are free. Why bother entering a credit card to pay for a more complex deployment with surprise hidden costs? Well, if you watched my last Five things I wish I knew about Streamlit video, which I really recommend to you if you didn't. There are things you want to do with Streamlit's backend server that you just can't easily do. Things like authentication, static asset serving, subscription paywall, and custom URL. And just like you want to delegate your cloud expenses to some FinOps people, you can delegate those server features to GCP services that are directly integrated with your deployed app. Authentication comes with identity provider, static asset serving with cloud storage and cloud CDN, subscription paywall, well, Firebase Cloud Function webhooks and custom URL comes with static external IP addresses and DNS. So if you want to bring your Streamlit Gradio Fast API deployments to the next level, I think it's time for us to take a leap of faith, leave the comfort of the free and easy Streamlit Cloud to dive into the deep woods of the not so free yet not so expensive cloud. If you want to be inspired to take that leap of faith into the cloud with me, or just talk about Streamlit and AI and Gen AI and data, well, subscribe to my channel and don't miss a video. I'll see you around, bye! Oh, wait, wait. Did you stay to watch my first try for Streamlit on GCP tutorial? That's so sweet. Let me show you how I did.
create a new GCP project, enter your credit card to enable billing, and set up billing alerts just in case hidden costs accumulate. If you're stressed out by money, when you're done with the test, you can delete that project to wipe out all of your work and stop those hidden costs. Open the Cloud Shell. It's a 50 hour per month free virtual machine with G Cloud pre installed and authenticated to all Google services. So it's easy to quickly deploy anything to the cloud from there. Open the Cloud Shell editor to access a new VS Code instance. Inside a new folder, write down some Streamlit code in a script and a Docker file to package your Streamlit Docker image. I found the Docker file instructions in the Streamlit documentation. I'll leave a link in the description so you can read the full line by line explanation of the file. Before building that Streamlit Docker image, we need to prepare a cozy nest to store it in. Search for artifact registry or find it in the left sidebar. If you're asked to enable the service, just accept it. You could have done that with a G Cloud command in Cloud Shell, or even using Terraform for the experts out there. But I'm still a newbie certified cloud user, and there's something satisfying with clicking buttons on the dashboard when you're a beginner. Create a new Docker repository in the region of your choice. If you want, you can add a cleanup policy to destroy images older than a day, because storing Docker images has a price. It's 25 cents per month, given the GCP calculator, that's around 50 times cheaper than your Netflix account, so I think we're good. To create the Docker image, you can run the docker build command in Cloud Shell, then push the image to the newly created Docker nest. Though there are some authentication and permission stuff to take care of for this to work. And frankly, I'm, I'm lazy, and when you're lazy, there's generally a Google service that does it for you. Head to the Cloud Build page, enable the service when asked for it, and then submit the build of the project Docker image to Cloud Build with the gcloud build submit command. Make sure the URL image tag is the same as the Docker artifact registry you created. The logs of the Docker build and push will be streamed into your console, and you can also find them in the Cloud Builds page. When the build is over, you should find the Docker image sleeping in the artifact registry. Now you could create a virtual machine in the cloud using the Compute Engine service. Those machines have Docker pre-installed, and they even have a dedicated menu to deploy a Docker image as a container inside. But if you do it this way, you'll have to set up a VPC network, configure firewall rules, assign a static external IP address, rewrite DNS records to point to the IP, configure a load balancer that splits traffic between instances of a managed instance group, scale up and down depending on the number of requests, manage OS patching of the VM, monitoring, logging, log You have admin rights of the virtual machines, but you also need to babysit it a lot. Way too much effort. And at this point, you understand if you need something because you're too lazy, there's a Google managed service that does it for you. We want a serverless service that manages infrastructure, scales up and down for us, and only makes us pay for when the app is up. Head back to your Docker image. In the item list, there's a strange deploy to cloud run. You should click on it. This brings you to a new deployment page on the Cloud Run service. You'll see a generous free tier on the right. It, it should make you happy. Scroll on the page, give your service a name, select a region, preferably the same as the region hosting your Docker image to avoid inter-region network costs. Then on auto-scaling, select zero as the minimum number of instances. That way, if no one uses your Streamit app, <laughs> Cloud Run will shut down the app and it won't cost you anything. Maybe don't ask for a hundred number of maximum instances. We never know if someone tries to DDoS attack your service that might spawn a lot of instances. So I back this down to one. With this configuration settings, the app should normally cost you around $6 per month for a small activity. Wait for it. And you should now see your serverless Streamit app and a dedicated URL you can send to your friends, colleagues, and future managers to get hired. Congratulations! From here, there are lots of possibilities by adding other GCP services. I hope I can show that in future videos like in this Streamlit with Firestore database video. But I'll still be posting in community posts until my next video comeback. I'll see you around. Bye!